Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Kena's homecoming service this Holy Saturday, 2024. For everyone streaming us online, watching on the Kena YouTube channel, welcome. For everyone in person, thank you so much for being here today. We will have an opportunity in a little bit to share Kena memories. So if uh, you want to get up and share Kena memory, you're going to be invited to do so. We will begin our homecoming service with water to wine. And of course, if you know it, sing it. The words are up there, both sides. mention a couple things here. This is a uh, kind of a water to, wine, water to wine reunion band today. So uh, we've got some people that used to play and uh, many people that are missing that we are thinking of today. But Diane, Diane is here. We got Heather here um, and Beth. Um, it's kind of a bittersweet time for us, but uh, we're happy to play and enjoying uh, the get together again. Uh, this. This next one we're going to do is, uh, uh, this is the light of mine. This used to be the song that um, Al Joseph and I and a couple others would play when we had um, Sunday school up here, and then we would do some music for Sunday school, and Al and I would play this, and would kind of lead into the service. So this is, if this, all you Sunday school kids will remember this. So uh, please, please sing along if you want to. Shine, let it 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 shine, let
it shine, let it shine, let it shine. May we open in prayer. Merciful God, your Son was lifted up to the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of, this wounded, or out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading for today for Holy Saturday in this homecoming service comes from the Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. So, the hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal? Can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I shall lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. At this time, Eileen Hatchos and Beth Duncan are gonna direct the kids' choir of old, singing uh, two well-known songs. So if you've ever sung as part of a Sunday school Children's Choir here at Cana, come on up. Come on up, Danielle, on up. Sydney, Jessica, come on. I see you guys back there. Susie, come on. I'll, I'll, I'll come get you. <laughs> Everybody up front. Come on. There we go. Get in here. Nobody left behind, come on. <laughs> and you can't say you don't know the words because they will be right on the screen.
Keep sneaking on in. We can move down. There's plenty of room. Move on down. Come on down. Let's see. Ladies, move up. Come on down. We got plenty of room. Come on down. Oh, you want to come up? You can come up. You want to stand? There you go. Awesome. So we're going to start with germs. Those of you who have done it. Those of you who haven't, you're going to learn it right now. And then we'll go into Kids of the Kingdom, which I know everybody knows, and everybody can get a chance to say their name. <laughs> we don't leave anybody out. <laughs> You'll get your chance. All right, Beth, you ready? <laughs> sing their name. Got it? We'll start down at this end. Jessica.
the Lord. My name is Lydia. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. My name is Daniel. I love My name is Ricky. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. My name is Timmy. I love the Lord. My name is also Timmy. I love the Lord. My name is Danny, I love the Lord. My name is Danny, I love the Lord. They love Jesus, they love the Lord. My name is Heidi, I love the Lord.
Thank you, kids choir. <laughs> now we will continue with the sharing of memories. So any memories people want to share um, dating back your experience with this place uh, since June of 1980, please, please share them. Um, and if you're sharing memories for the first time that people who might be your parents or grandparents may not know, <laughs> see where the spirit leads you. But this is the time to share memories. I just, uh, we are streaming the service. It will be on the Caney YouTube page. So I would invite you to come forward to a mic. You can come to the pulpit. You can come to the mic and by the music stand. And you can come to the lectern to share memories. always the hardest I feel like probably <laughs> um, so many memories that it's hard to it's hard to choose obviously um, but instead of one single memory the the thing I've been thinking so much about is certain eras so the era where we had a fire to me was so forming like as a growing person and sort of a really nice teaching moment of like the coming together and the community of things plus you know there's a lot of talk about the building and the building not being who we are and you know we can move on from those things and i think that that's an important point but also it is part of us and i love what we're doing today and celebrating here and singing to the rafters and I think celebrating the building is really important, and I think that we, we learned that early on with the fire. Uh, we kept ourselves passionate and together and worshiping and didn't miss a beat. And I remember just feeling really moved at that time in terms of you know, how we as a group, as a true family, moved through difficult times. And this became the place they learned about grief and love and family and commitment. And so it's truthfully, the probably most special place in, in Michigan for me as a, as a building, but I know going forward we are an entity forever. So my heart will always be here and always with each of you too. So thank you. So my memory goes back to about the year 1986. Ed and I had moved back to Michigan from Indiana Sarah, our firstborn, was, I don't even think quite toddling, but it was those months where you've all had young kids, you know, that they spent their days tearing the house apart, pulling pots and pans out of cupboards, pulling books off bookshelves, and I always just waited until she went to bed, and then I cleaned everything up. So Ed and I had visited a couple of churches in the area, and they were nice, and we got like a nice form letter saying, thank you for visiting. And then we came to Cana. We, had we were living in a small apartment in Troy at the time, um, and so maybe a week or so after we had visited here, after a long day of pots and pans and books all over the floor, uh, the buzzer rings on our apartment. And I pushed the buzzer and I said, who is it? And this voice said, Pastor Daly. And I, I remember looking at Ed and looking around our apartment. <laughs> and I, I looked at him and I said, what do I do? Because it was a mess. And Ed said, well, let him in. So. <laughs> I let him in, he came in, he stayed for maybe 20 minutes, we talked about the weather and sports and it was not a hard sell at all and he walked out the door and I looked at it and I said, well that's, that's it and, and the rest is history. That's why, really why we came to Cana. So that's my memory. My memories go back a little bit farther than that because I think I was born uh, at Cana. Although at that point it was Gethsemane. <clears throat> My mother at one point was the LCW president and she was that for a while. I remember her talking about how she really grew and became an organized person. She was so passionate about sharing They would put on mother and daughter pageants. 
I remember going to, to one of them and my sister's uh, bridesmaid dress that she had worn at a wedding. And it looked ridiculous on me because it had such a big chest, which I said, whose was this? Because <laughs> she stuffed. Um, <laughs> but my mother enjoyed putting on these beautiful, beautiful things. And all the ladies in the LCW would make these beautiful things for us to take home. Every little girl got a little doll. Or one year we, they made little hat boxes out of cardboard and paper. And they had little cookies. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I get so emotional. <clears throat> they had little cookies with a little marshmallow and they, paint, they frosted them and decorated them like little hats and put them in there. They were just exquisite. So many memories. Confirmation. Just so many friends, so many memories. I will miss it. Thank you. Some of you may remember the term sly. When Beth and I were here at church, there was a youth group and it was growing and it was, the youth were getting older and leaving. Pastor Northcott and Jerry Peterson asked Beth and I if we could do something to bring the youth group back together. I asked uh, Pastor Northcott if he would make an announcement that uh, tonight there's gonna be a pillow talk in the lounge. We had a pillow talk. We had the Streeter girls, we had the K girls, we had the Carson boys, we had the Singer kids, we had our own sons, and it was amazing. Sly was formed that night on a pillow talk. <laughs> and it was great. And part of it was the songs that you just sang here just a little while ago, Sly was part of that. And the Shoot kids were part of us too, the Dunkerleys, Hesselbachers. We miss Laura. It was great. Beth and I have so many memories of those kids and what they meant to us, all of them. Amen. I'm going to go back a little before 1980, that's okay, Ron. That's great. Linda and I moved here to Michigan in 47 years ago. I was about 10 at the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Michigan was our third state in seven years. And the reason that we were able to, I think, really survive all that upheaval was everywhere we lived, we had a church family. So uh, in a few months after we moved here, we ended up attending, at that time, Gethsemane. Sorry. And my first memory of Gethsemane was I was sitting back there near the aisle, and this little blonde person came up to the center aisle, not even as tall as, that, uh, uh, as the baptismal font, and sang a solo. I don't know if any of you remember that, but it was Rebecca Singer. <laughs> and that's when I learned that when you're a singer, you're a singer. <laughs> but it, it was, uh, we worshiped here for 27 years, and uh, three of the scariest things in my life took place while we worshiped here. Well, one was my daughter getting married. <laughs> that, was, that was not as scary for her, maybe, as it was for me, but we made it through. The second was, the second year we were members, I was elected to church council, and then I was elected to be president of church council, and then church council decided that they wanted to pursue a merger with this church in Detroit called St. Peter's Danish Lutheran Church. 
And then we went through the merger, and they elected me to be president of council of the merged church. It was, believe me, it was uh, somewhat chaotic, but we got through it. And then, as Rebecca mentioned earlier, the, one of the big events here that was really scary was the fire. And the reason I mention those things is because what I remember is that the faith and the spirit of the people here brought us through all of it. Thank you. Hello, I have uh, a lot of memories of this place as well. Um, some of you have talked about the churchy things and things we did here, but part of the magic of this place is that that fellowship and friendship extended beyond the church. And one of the things that I remember uh, most fondly about this place is when Terry Daly used to have the Super Bowl parties for the men of the church come over to the parsonage we would watch the Super Bowl, have snacks. It didn't matter if you were young or old. But he had a television set up in every room of the house. And I mean every room of the house. So you couldn't go anywhere and not watch that football game. And that was a, a, a magical bonding experience for me with the, with the guys of this congregation that I will, uh, I will always remember. And I miss those uh, Super Bowl parties. I didn't think I was going to come today, so I did a nice little write-up, and I do much better writing than I do speaking off the cuff. But um, I wrote in there that I think my years, my seven years serving Cana here were some of the happiest years of my life. It was my first ministry call. I loved everything about this place. Um, it, it just, I mean, I just want to cry just thinking about it. But... Wes basically started Water to Wine when he started playing guitar with Pastor Daly at the early service, and it grew from there. And we had the most fun in band, practicing on Friday nights, playing in worship on Sundays, and it was, it was literally some of the most fun I've had in my life. Um, my most inspirational moments have been the trips to Africa. The first time we saw Pastor Nick, um, we didn't know what to think because Pastor Daly and I had written letters to Endesac. The Sunday school had sent Christmas cards and offerings, and we had heard nothing from them for a year. So our first meeting, I, I asked him, I thought, maybe they didn't get it. So I said to Pastor Nick, did you know, we've sent you things. Did you get them? And he said, oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, like, okay. <laughs> And for a year, we got no thank you or any, any kind of recognition that you got it. So I, I asked him, I said, have you sent us anything? And he's, he said, no, I am so sorry, but we have been in a famine. And I have been busy trying to keep everybody fed. He was the district pastor, and he had to try to find every person in his district, which was hundreds of miles in diameter and circumference, and get them food if they were starving. And man, did I feel bad. <laughs> and those people were just wonderful the whole time we were there, singing us songs in harmony because they had no musical instruments, and it was just really inspiring. The funny story that I have to share um, was with the learning team. I don't know how we got talking about it, but one time at one of our meetings, the girls were talking about having mimosas, and I said, what's that? I'd never even heard of one. <laughs> the next meeting, they showed up with champagne and orange juice, <laughs> and we had mimosas at the learning team meeting. <laughs> and unfortunately, someone in the congregation who had an alcoholic family and was very much against alcohol decided to visit our meeting that night. <laughs> So we took the champagne under the table and offered her orange juice. <laughs> um, just 
just some of the best memories of my whole life came from this place, and I am so sorry that things have gone downhill like this. Um, but I will, I will never forget my time. So I'm just going to rattle off a couple of things that I remember real quick before I share something a little deeper. But um, I can remember with Sly getting up at like 5 o'clock in the morning to get the uh, food for the Easter breakfast. And, uh, oh, today? Oh, right, yeah, that would have been today, right, because it's, it would have been the Easter breakfast for tomorrow. Thank you for that. Um, I still have uh, the needlepoint cross uh, that I put on my Christmas tree every year. Uh, if that, like, that says 1981 on it. I'm not sure who made it, but someone from this congregation made it. Uh, I can remember when we were trying to figure out uh, to call Cana Cana, that one of the names tongue in cheek was going to be Baldy and the Blimp uh, because uh, <laughs> Pastor Northcott and Pastor Peterson, um, Pastor Peterson was lacking hair and Pastor Northcott was, well, uh, the blimp part of that, right? Um, but um, but um, more than any of that, uh, I think everyone who's maybe my age can, can say that the memory lives with us because we are who we are because of Cana, right? Like, the, all, all the things that we've done, everything that we've accomplished, the faith that we have is all because of the people in this room. So I just want to say thank you so much because it's meant the world to us. Thank you. I just came up here to refute anything that Dan would have said, <laughs> but he didn't say anything inappropriately. So, um, the I want to be sure to, make, to to have people here know as I look out that um, most of my memories are not of this place; they're of your basements and of your backyards and of your kitchens making Lenten donuts, brickers, right, or the pear tree in your backyard or watching Willy Wonka in your basement. These are things that only a handful of people know, but um, I do want to just acknowledge, I guess, that my first communion happened during a, um, during a uh, meeting, like everyone was in downstairs with the meeting, talking about a congregational thing, and we were upstairs with the kids running around, and um, apparently they kept the wine in the refrigerator, which I thought was grape juice. Um, so, so that happened, and I just want to acknowledge that to everyone. Um, but, uh, and then I remember, and it was like, it was a while, and I went downstairs, and I asked my parents, are we still, are we still meeting? And they're like, yeah, we're still in the middle of things. And I go, what have you guys been talking about? And they're like, well, we're talking about the mission statement. And I said, oh, have you figured it out? And they said, well, we know where we're going to put the period. <laughs> and that was my introduction. <laughs> to church decision making <laughs> that it takes it takes a long time and it takes a lot of faith in one another and faith in God and um, and so uh, as my brother said my gratitude extends to all of you um, it extends through me to because I got to see what it was like to live in a world as a faithful Christian and I didn't do it just through people that were like me there were a lot of people that were different than me that, um, that had different, you know, John Kay was an athlete, but he went through confirmation of me, and, and we experienced that together. And, and so I just want to say thank you for um, presenting to me different versions of how to be a faithful Christian in, in this world, um, and that it does live through us, and it lives through my kids and, and my uh, relationships. Um, so uh, the, the memories of this place are important, but it was all the other places that this place led me to that I think um, will... Uh, will continue to grow. I suppose I need to say something just to um, completely shock my parents. Uh, <laughs> my memories of this place are a little bit different. Um, I, I think I sometimes struggle to feel like I fit in here a little bit, but one of the things that I realized over the years and uh, especially it kind of brought home today uh, was that growing up two blocks from this place, um, it was always a place I knew I could go if I needed to. I knew, I knew it was a safe place for me uh, and a safe place for a lot of us. And as my brother Rick had just said, you know, like so many of the memories 
aren't necessarily about this place, but are about the people. And, and I, I look at all the faces that I see here, and it warms my heart. And I think about all the people that aren't here uh, that are just a, as much a part of my growing up. And I am so grateful to you all that even if I am not, if I didn't always find my place here, I knew I had a place with you all. And uh, it, it meant a lot and continues to mean a lot. So thank you very much. Well, like they just said, actually, um, I was always one of those kids that was off to the side, you know, kind of by myself in my own little world. And um, I always felt that this was home. There's no better word for it other than Kena and the people in it, more importantly, were another whole family for me. Growing up, I may not have always loved coming to church for the service, but... No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's my mother. <laughs> uh, but it was always the people who made it that much more worth it to come. And one of my... I have two very, very special memories to me. Um, <laughs> one is actually Sly Choir. And um, I remember, maybe not Sly Choir, but the little, little, little kids choir. And I remember Eileen Hatsos <laughs> was the director of it. And she and Beth would play, um, we would just do simple children's church songs, Jesus Loves Me, Kids of the Kingdom Germs. Uh, and one of my favorite memories was I remember being dropped off by my grandpa, and I remember seeing Eileen trying to run into the church really quick, like hiding a box of something under her arm, like she was trying to be really sly about bringing in our goodie for that night. And I remember, I don't know why, but I remember that it was um, a box of kudos. <laughs> if you don't know what a kudos is, it's a type of a granola bar with like chocolate chips or M&Ms. And I remember just being so ridiculously happy <laughs> over getting something that small. <laughs> um, uh, another favorite memory of mine was um, uh, I was part of a youth group growing up called um, International Order of the Rainbow for Girls. And we used to host sleepovers here in the youth room. And <laughs> we got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> but... <laughs> One of my favorite memories was we were trying to, um, I think we were trying to put on a talent show, and we were singing, uh, well, I was singing church songs, and the rest of the uh, girls were like, well, what's that? So I remember, I can call it breaking in, but I used one of my grandma's keys without her knowing to get into the choir room. <laughs> now, back then, I thought I was being really sly, really, really quick and smooth, but uh, no. One of the adults grabs me. She goes, well, what are you doing? Where are you going? You can't go in there. It's locked. Well, I've already gotten in there, so <laughs> I told them, oh, no, I just wanted to grab music. They wanted to see it, so next thing you know, we have uh, about 10, yeah, about 10 teenage girls singing Kids of the Kingdom at the top of our lungs, so that was my absolutely favorite memory. Um, I love everybody here, and I'm so, so happy to see everyone. Just thank you. Hello. I am the Eggman. <laughs> Barry, Barry, would you stand up, please? <laughs> My partner, Barry. He's the walrus. We spent many, many years Easter morning doing scrambled eggs and pancakes. Uh, Dan Fleshlin, thank you for bringing up the Super Bowl party. Uh, yes, there are TVs everywhere, even in the bathroom. Uh, on a sad note, Rebecca brought up the fire. Uh, I was teaching kindergarten and Sunday school at that point. And a few days after the fire, I came through and walked through, and I saw the smoke and water damage on the pictures that were on the wall. And that hurt. That really hit them. But I came up here to tell you something funny, though. <laughs> uh, i got to warm you up for Dirk. Uh, when Pastor Dennis first started, he was our interim pastor, if you remember him or not, he came down 
introduced himself before the service and told us a joke. He said a pastor came to his service, he was his first, first time there, and he told a joke. And we're going, okay, here we go. So, so he tells a joke and goes on. After the service, he goes, the pastor goes down the end of the church there, and everybody walks by and says, well, it's been a very nice service. You know, glad to meet you and glad to have you here. And an older guy came up and said, that was the worst service I've ever seen. <laughs> and the lady next after him tells, pastor, don't worry about him. He's crazy. So a little while later, the guy gets back in line and tells the pastor again, that was the worst service I've ever seen. And somebody else came up to the pastor and said, Pastor, don't worry about it. He's, you know, he's crazy. So right after Pastor Dennis was done with the service, he came down again. And I believe he was going to say, are there any announcements? And I interrupted him because I got up very quickly and I said, that was the worst service I've ever seen. <laughs> and there was a good roar. And then I hear some, a voice from the back, Mr. Brian Griffin. Brian, do you remember what you said? No, no. <laughs> Brian stood up and said, don't listen to him, he's crazy. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> I'm going to touch on a common theme, I guess. Tuesday, April 2nd, 1996. I remember exactly where I was that day. Back in that day, uh, I'd have my alarm set for WJR. I think it was J.P. McCarthy. And my alarm goes off, and I hear J.P. say, there's a church fire in Berkeley, Michigan, downtown by the high school. I'm not even out of bed yet. And I'm thinking, oh my god, that's my church. About 10 minutes later, I get a call from that guy over there, Pastor Terry Daly. He says, I don't know if you've heard yet. Oh, I forgot. The reason he called me is I was uh, congregational president at, at the time. He calls me. He says, well, if you haven't heard, the church is on fire. Well, I got up and decided, well, I wasn't going to work that day. And Terry and I were here, probably he was here, I'm sure, before I was, but I remember getting here at 7.30, quarter to 8. The firemen were still here. Uh, no one knew the extent of the devastation. There was smoke and soot and embers and, and just all kinds of uh, debris. And then that day, many people that probably are here today and some that are unfortunately no longer with us came to the church to see their church. And I can remember Pastor Daly telling people, and then I would just mimic him because he's a wise man, um, this, you know, it's just a building. We're a congregation. We'll be just fine. This just happens to be where we worship. We'll be fine. And to show that, thanks to his leadership, this is Tuesday of Easter week. He arranges, I think it was with the Presbyterians or the Episcopalians, to have Monday, Thursday service over on Woodward. We had Good Friday service somewhere, and we had Easter service in the auditorium at the high school. This is all in five days that we didn't skip a beat. And then what happens? We work out an arrangement with the Berkeley School District where we use their elementary school. I think we originally talked about six months, but I think it ended up being a lot longer than that. But what would we do? What did we do as a congregation? We as a congregation, maybe the Beckless one week took the candles home. Another week, someone maybe took the baptismal fount home. You took the cross home. You took the paraments home. And then you'd come to Sunday and we would have worship like nothing ever happened. And we survived. We thrived. And now we're here some 28 years later, still worshiping as a congregation. And the lesson I learned then is even though we will no longer be worshiping in this room, we will still be worshiping as a congregation. So keep that in mind.
those of you who don't know, I am Pastor Scott Miller. For the past 23 years, I've been serving as the pastor of Drayton Presbyterian Church. For most of that time, we were located in Ferndale, and in 2017, we made the very painful and difficult decision to leave our building there and to find a new home. Initially, we thought we would go to Greenfield Presbyterian because they are fellow Presbyterians. However, we found out that they had no space for us to accommodate us on Sunday mornings with two services, and their parking lot was full. And Pastor Peter Moore at the time says, you know, you should talk to Ron Strobel over Cana Lutheran. So I did. And Peter kindly introduced me to Ron. We had uh, coffee together. Um, and in the course of that conversation, uh, a friendship began to develop. It has led to this. Our congregation has been worshiping here at Cana for the last six years. I don't know where we would be without the grace and hospitality of this congregation. And I know I speak for every member of our church when I say to you all, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your grace, your hospitality, your kindness. We have done far more than share a space. We have shared fellowship. We have shared worship. We have shared service together. We have shared vacation Bible school together. We have done so many wonderful things together. And those memories will live on, I know, within our congregation, and for me as well. And as I shared in my Monday Thursday sermon, I hope that we have set an example for what other congregations can do. Instead of each church living in their own little silo, we have demonstrated what we can do when we partner together and collaborate in ministry. And what we've accomplished together, I think, has been a wonderful and beautiful thing. And I hope that that light will continue to shine in this community and beyond as we, we have been faithful to God's call and we have sought to live that, that calling together as partners in ministry. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Aaron Daly, for those of you that don't know. Um, I'm Pastor Daly's youngest son, and I've prepared a couple of remarks that I promise will be shorter than the sermons. <laughs> Thank you. We, we came here in 1984. Um, it was a pivotal time for me and my brother. It's hard. Um, he had just entered high school. I was coming into middle school. It was a challenge for us leaving our friends and family in Muskegon and coming here. It had taken us a while, it took some time for adjustment, but we let a, met a lot of wonderful people in this congregation, and I'd like to share with some memories that I have now. I spent many times stepping out of church to play with the kids in the nursery. I always enjoyed playing with the little kids and holding little babies. One summer I volunteered to help out a vacation Bible school. My job was to help the kids outside, keep them focused, keep them on the activities. One time in particular was burned into my memory as we were playing outside and running around. As mob rule would have it, I became the target of all the kids and they started chasing me. So I ran around the yard for what seemed like three hours but realistically was probably five minutes. <laughs> but it really resembled a person in a park entering with open loaves of bread only to find 15 geese that hadn't eaten in a week. <laughs> it sticks out in my memory, both from the joy that I had playing with the kids and from the mortal fear that I had that I might not make it through that day. <laughs> Suffice it to say, I turned out okay, they turned out okay. Something that happened uh, in between services of every Sunday, we had the meet and greet in the lounge. I enjoyed it. Got to meet a lot of adults that I, I wouldn't have met and got to say hi to 
A lot of highs, hellos, how are you's were passed. Got to meet many people. It gave us time to meet his friends and move about the church, go through the back room, the nursery. I'm not sure if the refreshments in the lounge were my dad's idea or it was developed outside of a committee. But since this is my memory of events and in a true childlike form, I'm gonna blame my dad for this one. <laughs> I don't know whose idea it was to serve donuts in between the service to a whole bunch of kids that were unsupervised. <laughs> but I'd like to say thanks. <laughs> uh, there was a basket out, it was part of the honor system. And I will tell you now that I did honor myself with at least one donut from every tray that was out there. <laughs> okay, more, more like two. All right. I don't suspect many of you know this, so you did mention about being careful about bringing up uh, items that some people may have been involved with, but. Uh, not realize this memory's coming. <laughs> but there was one time when several unruly teenagers in this church decided to give one of my dad's sermons a score. <laughs> it was done in a fashion uh, just like the Olympics. There were large signs with large numbers written on them. And they were held high at the uh, at the back there, showing through the windows. <laughs> so, true to character, or true to character, or maybe based on the scores he received, <laughs> Dad did not show any acknowledgement at the time of that scoring. I don't recall him mentioning it afterwards, thankfully. But to maintain the sanctity of those involved, their names were, will forever be held in confidence. That way, Sean, Tim, and myself are free from <laughs> reprisals and retributions. Uh, a bunch of people have mentioned Eastern Market. That is a prevailing theme. It's, it's memories I've got as well. One of those events uh, we talked about for weeks and weeks ahead of time. I'm sure there's lots of planning and logistics around that. I always looked forward to that time throughout the year. Aside from the insanely early time, thank you, Dan, for bringing that up. <laughs> Don't know who was thinking about that, but from a kid's perspective, that's a little bit early. One of the things that we liked was going to the Eastern Market to get all the supplies, the eggs, the sausage, the bacon, the bread. But I'll tell you from a kid's perspective, none of us cared about that. What we cared about was finding that one candy store that sold the bulk candy in the boxes. Yes. That was the only thing. Yes. We had a job to do, but that was left up for the adults. <laughs> for the breakfast itself, there was always a rush to sign up to the sheet, get the hot jobs, which was cooking and serving, with the few that wanted the dreaded cleanup. But regardless of how fast you got to the sheets, all those jobs were filled. There were always people to help. There were always kids volunteering for that. The kitchen itself was always a beehive of activity with adults working together with the kids, everybody coming and going. I remember the attendance of the breakfast being a constant flow of people, always coming down the stairs and entering the converted dining area. While we were working, it always seemed crazy busy, like it would last all day. But when it was done, you kind of wondered why it went so fast. Since I've heard about Cana being sold and becoming another chapter in, in the book of life, I've thought about a lot of the personal ties and the feelings that I've had. And I'd like to bring a parallel to you that I've thought about that gives me some comfort. The Bible speaks of how Christ went to the most unlikely of characters, to the bewilderment of the crowds and the individuals themselves, 
only to demonstrate how that one seed of kindness, help, and acceptance not only impacted those around, but exponentially affected those around them. Although it does not give the full context, I suspect that the Bible, those individuals, they affected differently, and they affected them at different times, causing a profound effect. I see a parallel in how the physical objects of Cain are being repurposed to various institutions, some religious, some commercial, as well as to individual people. This includes people in places outside of Cana. I feel that these objects carry some benefit forward to the receiver and others as they observed, both through their history of where they came from and through their physical design. Most times through the design, you can tell that an item came from a church. We don't know the plans with which God has set in motion, but I choose to view these as a seed being carried forward to a new place. At some time and date as yet unknown to us, it'll be recognized as coming from one of God's many houses. It may only be one person, it may be a multitude, but we'll never know. That event may not happen for days or years or decades, but it only takes that one seed to grow into a tree and that tree to repopulate an entire forest. I would like to take this moment to say thank you to all of the adults and the people involved in Cana. It made a difference in my life and to one of the few places where I've carried many of those connections, some a little looser than others, but some pretty tight forward to this day. Thank you for creating those memories for me, as well as for many that have spoken here before me and that'll come after you can rest assured that I, all the sacrifices and time, effort that you put in, given to the kids at Cana, while not always recognized, are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Since Aaron came up here and shared a memory, I'm going to share a memory that Pastor Daly told me years ago about his son Aaron. <laughs> Pastor Daly was sitting up here doing the children's sermon. Of course, he had his microphone on so we could all hear it. About halfway through the children's sermon, Aaron looks up and exclaims loudly, you've got hair in your nose. <laughs> now in the first chapter of Genesis, six times it's written and thus ended. <laughs> Pastor Daly said, and thus ended the children's sermon. <laughs> K-girls um, that have been spoken about several times. Um, I'm Susie. Um, I was baptized at this baptismal font alongside my entire family, all seven of us. Um, I grew up within these walls. This is hard. I grew up here. And um, I wanted to come up after Aaron because I don't know if anyone else heard his father's voice through his while he spoke. It was a time warp. Uh, I was hearing Pastor Daly's voice, his mannerisms, the way he spoke his words. It was like listening to Pastor Daly preach. Um, and it was comforting. Thank you, Aaron. That was wild. And then I wanted to talk about Eastern Market. 
and the candy store and Dan, because I was the one who got lost, because I stayed at the candy store. And when I looked up, all my Cana kids were gone. But I was okay, because I was in the candy store. Uh, um, but I got eventually found, I think, I don't know who found me, but maybe it was you, Dan, or Betsy, somebody. Um, but I got back to Cana oh, in one piece. The, the Easter breakfasts were um, a sacred memory of mine. And everything Aaron said, spot on. We fought over who got to do what, but they weren't really fights because we all came together and we all did and we loved it. I grew up here and I am who I am today because of not the building, not the walls, but the family, the church. So as Aaron said, thank you. So many times we are not given the opportunity to look back over the years and thank the people who formed us. But I've been given that opportunity to the Duncans, especially. You have no idea what you have meant to me. Who gets that chance? I love you. And I am who I am because of Kena. These are walls. And change is the essence of life. And you can't take that from me. So thank you to all of you. Every one of you. Because I've grown because of you. Thank you. We have a few memories that have been submitted by folks that for one reason or another weren't able to physically be here today, but feel very deeply about Cana's ministry. And those memories will now be shared by Paula Cardelli and Karen. Just to keep it interesting, Karen and I are going to tag team. The first one I'm going to share is a quick one from Karen Tira, who is in Florida and cannot make it back in time. She says, so many wonderful memories come to mind. Weddings, funerals, Luther League, Easter breakfast, BBS craft shows, and on and on. My love to all and the joy that it brings. I think it feels very appropriate that Cana will be a part of the Berkeley school system. Cana has always been a part of the education of some of Berkeley's children, and so it will remain. I hope it will continue to inspire the good in them. This is from me, who I say, what are the chances that in 1978, when Fred and I moved down to the Detroit area, 
that our four-year-old daughter Gretchen would meet her best friend for life, Gerald Dunkley, the first day that we came to the seminar. And that our two-year-old daughter Heidi would meet one of her best friends for life, Peter Dunkley. And not to mention, a few years after that, that Lynn and I found out that we are relatives. I tell you, God does work in mysterious ways. So you're attending the 8 a.m. contemporary service, it was always a delightful service. No one really knew who was going to stand up and do the prayers or singing what songs. It was just kind of fly by the seat of your pants sometimes, and it was wonderful. And I remember my Christmas Eve services when I was a youth in Bay City, when our minister's wife would sing, Oh, Holy Night. My siblings and I would start giggling. She was a soprano. My poor parents had to keep shushing us. Now as adults, when our young children of our own, our little angels, would start giggling when Mrs. Hunsaker would sing, Oh, Holy Night. Because again, she was also a soprano. And I also remember Easter mornings coming in first thing in the morning for our sunrise service that you could see the sun just coming right in through our stained glass window back there. I remember my daughter receiving her first communion. She had a wafer on Christmas Eve. She had her communion wine on Christmas Day. I also remember that Pastor Daly was either officiating or attending all of our children's um, weddings. I have so many other memories, as all of you do. And I give you hugs to all. Our next message is from Jeannie Cumler. Ralph, her late husband, and I arrived in Detroit in 1970 and joined the St. Peter's Danish Lutheran Church after Pastor Godfrey Alberti in Redford advised us we would be a good fit. Pastor Alberti has confirmed us in 1954 in New Jersey. I believe it was an excellent choice. Then the time came to merge St. Peter's with Gethsemane to establish Cana. We made many dear friends with our combined congregations. We maintained an associate membership with Cana after moving to Commerce and joining All Saints in Heartland in 1980, 1998. I have numerous fond memories. One memory that was outstanding was having my having the honor and pleasure of teaching first year confirmation class. That experience helped me reaffirm my faith and hopefully influence my students in understanding their own faith. Give my best to all, lovingly, Jeannie Cumler. This is from Krista Kaiser Brennan. These are the things that she remembers, belting out King, kids of the kingdom during their choir practice. The Easter service also, at Berkeley High School after the fire. Her winter trip to Michaluka, which had the best sledding area ever. How David McBride would keep extending the music on the days that took her longer to light or distinguish the candles on the altar. <laughs> when she picked up an offering plate to take to the ushers, she saw a spider. She showed it to Pastor Daly. He just nonchalantly took the pad out, dumped the spider on the floor and killed it and said, Continue. <laughs> she remembers on the Christmas Eve services, Tim Duncan playing O Holy Night on his saxophone, Rick Carlson and Michelle singing O Holy Night. The year that her brother and her were waiting in the sacristy to light the altar candles when her brother accidentally caught her hair on fire. <laughs> Watching the candles being lit during silent night and how the stained glass windows became brighter and brighter throughout the service. And her weekly daily, daily hugs. She says, thank you for the wonderful memories. Our 
I have memories from Gretchen Kaiser Bachman. Making Easter breakfast and going to Eastern Market the day before to buy supplies. Common theme. Singing day. Oh, singing Deo, the one Easter breakfast and the whole basement could hear all the kids. Sunday school on the stage in high school. Our cohort, Kelly Bringman, Rick Carlson, Jill Dunkerley, Jeff Gifford, John Kay, and me. Beth Duncan and Penny Carlson and all the performances. Playing a camel in a play. <laughs> kids of the Kingdom, Tecumseh Woods with Sly, 8 a.m. church services, Ritz Dropping playing the guitar, catechism on Wednesday, and then rushing to marching band at Don Darrow with Jill Dunkerley, playing tic-tac-toe in the back pew during church services with Jill, Sandy and J.S. Laskin, Carol Ford, the Blinkhills, Mr. Blinkhild, Mr. Trouble was my sponsor. I added the Mr. Trouble. And Terry and, er and Ellie Daly. Gethsemane and Cana will always have a special place in my heart. Well, thanks to modern technology, as we're sitting here, Gretchen added one more to her list, and Quick said, hey, can you get up there and say this? So um, there is probably one person in this entire congregation um, who did not like Kids of the Kingdom, and that was our beloved Jill, because she had a one-syllable name. And it just doesn't sound the same when you're like, my name is Jill. I love the Lord. I mean, she never went by Jilly, just Jill. But it was important enough to share, so I just wanted to, to add that. Thank you. This is from our son, Fred. As many of you would know, probably is Freddie. He remembers the potluck. He also remembers Tim Duncan playing O Holy Night on the sax. Mrs. Hunsaker singing O Holy Night, hide and seek throughout the church and someone hiding under the organ during the 11 a.m. service. <laughs> Remember Pastor Daly and Deacus Carroll hanging out Pastor Daly's and Mrs. Daly's house. Uh, he doesn't remember why, but they let him play in Aaron and Sean's room. Hugs for Mrs. Daly and Mrs. Brock. Again, the kin kids of the kingdom, kids of the kingdom. Mrs. Duncan playing the piano at choir practice. Mrs. Singer and the weird looking instruments she could play really well. Hanging out with Jamie, Bree, Sarah, Jane, and Melissa. The Sly events, Mr. Goffney's Sunday School, Lynn Dunkley's green junk at the potlucks, and weird jello desserts with fruit and carrots. The next is from Nancy Brown. Hanging in my home in Minneapolis is a photo of me on my first day of Sunday school at age three at Gethsemane, where I prayed the kingdom and the power and the glory in the Lord's Prayer, imagining a pirate's chest and not caring that Jesus would make me cement, as in, I will make you fishers of men. My dad named a wooden chair from that wing during a church remodel in the 1980s, and I still use it as a footstool or end table. Ten cent offering for vacation Bible school, Red Rover in games, vanilla ice cream scoops as a treat on the last day. Having to sit in the first row of pews during confirmation, and someone trained a mini flashlight beam in Pastor Nelson's eyes throughout the service. A pier caught fire when a spark from the candle set his acolyte robe on fire, but didn't deter Sue Parks and I from insisting girls should be acolytes too. Women's group awarded us individual candle extinguishers and gavels to Marilyn Stephan and Dorothy Griffin as the first women council members. Fun with the full-size paper mache purple cow, canoe trips, tobogganing at February Michaluka Luther League retreats, awesome young married chaperones. Mom was Sunday school secretary, dad an usher, brother Wayne and I walked to Sunday school, all of us at different times. More often than not, we all left at different times and occasionally the car was left in the parking lot. 
and someone had to walk back to retrieve it. <laughs> so grateful for tuition scholarships to seminary, an invaluable gift I hope you are continuing, hospitality at my ordination, embracing community and outreach to others are a valuable legacy, signs of God's activity with you, the Reverend Nancy Brown. This is from Sean Daly. So I'd like to share a few good memories of my time at Cana. Our move to Cana was the first move I experienced that I could remember, and I was scared. Changing schools and upending friendships is a very scary to any teenager. However, the SLAG group, Super Lutheran Youth, I found to be very welcoming and helped ease a lot of my fears. I made a lot of friends, even though some of them probably wished I wasn't so clever at hiding in snowbanks to scare them during church camp. <laughs> Despite that, I had a good time with them at the various pool parties or when helping out with Easter breakfast, despite how tired I was. I'm still not a morning person even after all these years. Despite the time and changes over the years, that was some of my most happiest memories at Cana. Of course, there are a lot of other good memories. Too many to list, to be time considerate, I will be brief. Playing the organ was always fun and enjoyable, but I never could get it loud enough to shake the rafters. Bringing the SA, SCA medieval group I belonged to into the church when they needed a meeting space. Having my brother call the cops on me while he and a friend were racing their RC cars in the church. I gotta ask you about that, Aaron. <laughs> Taking home the fruit compost left over from Easter breakfast to brew homemade mead, honey wine, out of it. But it didn't go as planned. And going to the retirement communities to sing Christmas carols. Again, so many memories from such a wonderful community in an awesome building. The building may change owners over the years, but Cana is more than just the building. As long as we remember and share with others, Cana will live on through us. This one's for me. I look at today as a celebration of our relationships born of commitments to community inside and outside this space. The merger of St. Peter's in Gethsemane 43 and a half years ago against all odds, built a new community dedicated to building relationships and putting faith into action by serving others. I think of the many ways we have done this, guided by members, council leadership, pastors, aims, deaconesses, youth minister leaders, and music directors. Our commitment to community by the joy of music, the organ, the piano, and those musicians that have made them sing. The choirs, the youth, and the kids' choirs, the special musicians, and all the musical programs. Water to wine and the jazz services. Our commitment to community with youth. Our Sunday school programs, our youth, our little kids coming up for sermon right here as part of us. Luther League Sly and then stage in partnership with the Presbyterian churches in Berkeley Royal Oak in Birmingham, Frog, our service opportunities for middle school students, and mission trips for high schoolers. How many of you are missioners? Went on mission trips? Yeah. Backyard Playroom, which is serving families in the community with children under age of five, with the safe, fun, free place to play and build relationships. Berkeley High School kids that have lunch out back on our front porch that Sally welcomes into the youth room when the weather isn't great because they know that they're loved. Our commitment to community for those in need. Our resettling of a Vietnamese family. Building a partnership with Endesac in Tanzania, providing scholarships for students to go to high school and funds for their church community. The Warming Center serving hopeless, homeless individual, adults through our fire, 
our partnership with Genesis at Berkeley High School, then moving to, with Genesis to their building to continue our work, and adding another partner, Kensington, Birmingham, as we have supported the Warming Center for 31 years. Our blanket workshop from Welka that provided over 2,000 lap robes and layettes to the Visiting Nurse Association and the quilting group that's provided many homemade quilts to those in need. Our commitment to our surrounding community, the many groups, NA, AA, TOPS, et cetera, that have found a safe and welcoming home here. Our wonderful partnership with Drayton Presbyterian Church. Outdoor worship, blessing of the pets, dream cruise, parking lot service. And now a new adventure awaits as we are led by the Spirit in faith and love. What's next? This is from Pastor Kevin Jensen, who is now out in Sturgis, South Dakota. Dear beloved disciples of Cana Lutheran Church, greetings in the name of Jesus, the one who can do all things but fail. In remembering our shared history together, my heart is filled with gratitude as you celebrate your homecoming on March 30th. I wish I could be there, but the miles do keep us apart. Thanks to Fred and Karen Kaiser, we receive a Christmas card every year that keeps us informed about what is happening at Cana Lutheran Church. And I appreciate Fred letting me know about your upcoming celebration. As I reflect on my service as your pastor from 2001 to 2006, I feel immense joy and thanksgiving for my memories, the growth, and the blessings we shared. To catch you up a little bit on our family, I'll start with our daughter, Kendra. She was born during our time together, and I was in grad school at the University of South Dakota completing her degree in physical therapy. Our son Samuel is now working as an accountant at a furniture mart in Sioux Falls after starting his professional career in the finance department at South Dakota State University. He is engaged to be married in just over a year to Nicole Muller, a nurse at Avera McKenna Hospital. The wedding will be at St. Benedict Catholic Church in Yankton, South Dakota. The end of this year will mark my 30th year of ordained pastoral ministry. Together with my wife, Pastor Kala, we now serve at Grace Lutheran Church in Sturgis, South Dakota. As most of you know, Sturgis is famous for its annual bicycle rally in early August. Our church is only one block from Main Street where tens of thousands of motorcycles and riders gather every summer. We do serve hundreds of rally breakfasts every summer. Looking back to our days in Michigan, I remember countless moments of fellowship, worship, and service that shaped us as the body of Christ. Now, Arcana, Cana, you have reached a new milestone as your church building becomes part of the Berkeley School District. My prayer is that even though the changes, you will continue to be about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. My time of pastoral ministry at Cana was not without some struggles, but there were also many more times of joy and laughter that came to be symbolized by the big butterfly on the cross to celebrate Easter. Together in Christ, we took our turn hosting the South Oakland Warming Center for a couple of weeks every winter. I will always remember the depth of caring for those in need who came for shelter, food, and spiritual care. I also hold dear in my heart the baptism of, by immersion of our daughter at Cana and the giant bowl set on top of the baptismal font. As Pastor Carla said the words of the sacrament and swept our precious daughter through the water three times, I couldn't help but think of the church's name and how Jesus turned a large amount of water into wine in his first miracle at the wedding of Cana. I also fondly remember our contemporary music group, Water to Wine, our Cana Choir, and how blessed we were to share in the wonder of Christmas in music, song, and candlelight. In all things, we are reminded of the boundless, boundless grace and blessings that God has bestowed upon us. 
through our paths have taken us in different directions, the disciples and saints of Cana will always hold a special place in my heart. The bonds of friendship that unite us will never be broken. So I pray your hearts will continue to be full of anticipation as you journey onward in the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love them like Jesus, Pastor Kevin Jensen. My favorite Bible verse, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. At this time, we'd like to invite Deaconess Kill Ford up. Nearly 40 years ago, it will be 40 years this coming November, I came to serve as deaconess here. It was exciting to come to this congregation because you were basically newlyweds. There had just been the merger a few years before, and there were so many ministries. I can't tell you all of them because so much has been shared already. When I was preparing these remarks, I was thinking that this was such a vibrant congregation, and I crossed it out. And I said, no, Jesus lives here. And that's my main memory. I do remember collecting food with the social ministry. I remember them making layettes for the, the babies that were being born. So many outreaches to the community. A busy Sunday school and VBS. One year we made our own curriculum for VBS. I do remember the youth group that we did lock-ins here, which were very long nights. We went to Tecumseh Woods. Of course, going to Eastern Market and doing the breakfast was a highlight for all of us. The youth group went a number of times to the soup kitchen in Detroit, and I think that part of service was so important. And one of our students actually wrote about it and got published for that. I remember the women's ministry meeting, the blanket sewers, the widow's ministry, Cana gals, and so many, many people who stepped up and cared for members in the community. There's so many people that I won't mention all their names because there would be too many and you would have to strike up the orchestra uh, to make me stop. When I left, I said that I hold you in my heart, and I still hold you in my heart. One of my last memories, I didn't want to mention anyone, but could it be Cana, Christmas at Cana back then, without Betty Hunsicker singing, Oh Holy Night. We've lost many people over the years, and you've gained people that I have never met. But this remains the same. Jesus is in this place. And this place, as we've said, is not the building. This place is the body of Christ gathered here. So we know Jesus will continue to live in the people gathered here. Praise God. May God continue to bless your ministry and your journey. As mentioned throughout our time together, both at the luncheon and at the homecoming service, over the last almost 44 years of Cana's ministry in this place, we have lost and gained many people. Over 44 years, many people have been called home to the church triumphant. One of those folks we have recently lost was Miss Alice Jorgensen. And one of Alice's greatest gifts was that Alice valued preserving the memories and the material artifacts of the past so that present and future generations could benefit from the wisdom of ancestors. 
Almost 20 years ago, in 2005, Cana hosted a year-long 25th anniversary celebration with a multitude of services and other community outreach events, such as planting a tree out front for Arbor Day. And Alice Jorgensen, in her wisdom, put together a beautiful scrapbook as a living document of that year of celebration, that year of hope. And it is in uh, the Cana Church office today, if anyone wants to look at it. Another person we lost, and in my humble opinion, a person we lost far too soon, was the Reverend Joe Heather. And at that year of celebration in 2005, there was a Sunday at the end of September where they honored all of Cana's pastors up until that time. And they invited Pastor Joe to preach. And uh, I found it quite fortunate that Pastor Joe was one of those pastors that actually typed out her sermon. And as we conclude our time of sharing memories in the homecoming service, and as we prepare for that next chapter, that next season of life, I want to share with you some of Pastor Joe's words that she shared here in this pulpit almost 20 years. These are the words of Pastor Joe. God's love got lived out and continues to be lived out by the people of this congregation. The people of Cana became a new thing and have been doing the will of God ever since. And I was one of the privileged children who grew up in that new thing, who understood that new thing not so much from words, but from actions. I understood God's love by seeing it in action here. The Advent Tree of Needs taught me about reaching out to people in need. I learned from Sunday school and confirmation teachers that figuring out your faith is ongoing, that it's okay not to know, that sometimes it's awfully hard to figure God out. I learned from Beth Duncan and Diane Singer specifically, but others too, how to worship through music and how freeing it is to do so. And how everyone's noise can be a joyful noise when shared in church. I also learned from them that sometimes you have to stand up and sing, even when you don't want to. There were people like Beth and Dan Duncan, Karen, and Rich Dropping, Jay and Sandy, who taught that one way to live out God's love would be to hang out with young people, take them places, sleep out in tents with them, just be with them when the whole rest of the world would like for teenagers to simply disappear during that season of life. The lessons were incredibly important to me and to my faith formation. A ministry of presence and patience and love. I celebrate with you today 25 years of living out the love. And I look forward with you to the next 25 
and beyond. Praise God for the new thing of Cana Evangelical Lutheran Church and to it ever becoming a new thing of love and life. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. At this time, we will continue the service with music. Characters. 
Joseph of Arimathea, a secret disciple, and Nicodemus, the nighttime disciple, coming to Pilate, asking for Jesus' body and laying it in a new tomb where the vast majority of people who were part of Jesus' earthly ministry fled, who felt that Jesus' ministry had gone downhill, who felt that Jesus' ministry had come to an end with his death, his death on the cross, we see two men who needed this ending, who needed death, to experience new life. In asking for the body of Jesus, surely Joseph of Arimathea was declaring his loyalty to Jesus. The secret is no more. Joseph wants to be out front and center. He is in Jesus' camp. And what about Nicodemus? He was the nighttime disciple who now steps out into the light of day. He helped Joseph remove the body from the cross. He no longer hides under the cover of darkness. They are different men. Their lives have been changed. They are new men. How did this happen? What got into them? As we just heard the words of wisdom, from our dearly departed Pastor Jill. Cana has always been about doing new things. And Cana enters into a season of new things. We do not know where we will physically worship in the future, but we do know that the hospitality, the love rooted in action, and the belief that this is Jesus' church will carry us well into this new adventure. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the Cana Choir singing the song softly and tenderly. I'd like to invite the Cana Choir.
It's now time for us to celebrate Holy Communion. If you're worshiping at home, if you're watching on YouTube, I invite you at this time to prepare your own communion elements. If you're worshiping in person, I invite you to use your own elements. You're also invited to come down the center aisle and receive a gluten-free cracker, an individual glass of wine. There will be individual glasses of grape juice in front of the baptismal font. Throughout his ministry, Jesus placed no restrictions on the communion table. Therefore, there will be no restrictions on this afternoon's communion table. Regardless of how you feel or don't feel about Jesus, regardless of how you feel or don't feel about the present circumstances of your own life, regardless if you feel communion is sacred or communion is profane, you are welcome to come forward this afternoon and receive the body and blood of Christ. Not because of who you are, not because of what Cana Lutheran has been and is, but because of who God is. A God who loves each and every one of us so much, God will stop at nothing to be in relationship with us, even sending God's own son to die the death of a common criminal on the cross so that you and I and all people can be in relationship with God for eternity. Our service continues with the words of institution. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite everyone to stand. Together, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the peace together. You may be seated.
Carol, this is the body of Christ given for you. Penny, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. All are invited to stand to receive the post communion blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bless and keep you now and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us close in prayer. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy day shines with the radiance of the spirit of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and may shine as a light in the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our setting ritual. Feel free to stand, sing along, clap, whatever you want to do. Join with water to wine, and then we'll conclude with a blessing.
stand to receive the sending blessing. As we go out from this place, may love and laughter light your days and warm your hearts and home. May good and faithful friends be yours wherever you may roam. May peace and plenty bless your world with joy that long endures. May all life's passing seasons bring the best to you and yours. Amen. Amen. All are invited to head to the lounge to grab a, an ornament or to look at the hymnal.